Ramble. Thank you to BetterHelp and Case to Five for sponsoring today's episode. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. You know. Speaking of magic, I got. An, I. I was driving here and I had a video idea. So, okay. Are you ready for this? It's okay. called "Can I Get Blank at 3 a.m." And you draw out of the hat what it is. So like shrimp cocktail. It's three in the morning. Yeah. I'm about to get a text of what I'm supposed to try to find to eat right now. I love this. Shrimp cocktail. And it's a trying to travel around the city to try to find and get a shrimp cocktail. I like this. That's genius. I want it to be a TikTok and I want you to be plastered. (laughs) I imagine. Oh, that's so funny. I I, I was thinking about At Midnight with Dave Attell, that old show. And there was something cool about a tourism show where everyone on screen is hammered. Yeah. Yeah. And it... But also just nightlife is interesting. LA has notoriously bad late night food food and existence. There's just nothing to do at three in the morning. Okay. For such a huge city. Bring in, uh, we're, we're going to Mr. Beastify it. First blackout person to get shrimp cocktail at 3 a.m. wins shrimp cocktail. That's <laughs> so funny, too. I'm just imagining people running and like the camera shaking. <laughs> I mean, you're just going to have to be hailing Ubers and with a cameraman. Yeah, right. Hailing an Uber? Yeah, huh? Because you're drunk. Uber! You don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah. Kicking people out of their Uber, buying like, their Uber. Also, like, that's a good thing to know, though. Like, if I'm in LA, I'm always trying to get late night food and it fucking. So you can't to get, get it. But cocktail. even, like, <laughs> as simple as, like, can I get a cheeseburger at 3 a.m.? You think that'd be easy. Can I have cheeseburger? You yeah, got to find sure. it. The diner will have it, but a diner won't have shrimp cocktail. So, like, finding specific, like, filet mignon. Can I get filet mignon? And, 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 we got filet mignon, mignon at four in the morning uh, when we're in Vegas. Oh, well, that's Vegas. That was nice, but that was Vegas. Vegas, of course, you can get it at three in the morning. Yeah. We can one I have a great video clip. Maybe we can release that as a main channel video. Great video clip of me and Keith eating pancakes, chicken wings, and like some <laughs> other oh, calamari. Calamari. At like fucking four in the morning. Yeah. We're we're in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the episode. Welcome to the tripod. Hello. Hey. Uh so we obviously have um a lot of unreleasable Stop. videos <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that we have said we'll never see the light of day. But an idea that I had, I've put MJ and Will on this. I said, why don't you just start stringing out all your favorite bits from from the archives? You yeah. know, if we have the all these unreleasable episodes, and is there a way for us to release the best of the videos you can't see? Yeah. Mm. I'd want you to host it in a little bow tie. Like a review. A bow tie. Like a review America's show. F- like funniest home videos? Yeah, let's take a Next look. Next up, we have a yeah. clip from yeah. this video where when Miles you... and Keith <laughs> are a little too hungry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It'd be so fun. <laughs> when you say little bow tie, I'm picturing something like like a Lego, tiny, like tiny. a Lego bow tie. Like, like, like one bow that would go on a Lego man. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> A microscopic bow tie. <laughs> Fucking minuscule. That'd be great. So in current news, yeah. um, something we haven't talked about is that we were on Saturday Night Live. Not us, yeah. but our likeness. Right. And that that's it. That's all there is to say about that. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was, okay. So this happened, what, two weeks ago now? Three weeks ago now? Two? I don't know. Time is flying by. Yeah. So something that's happened over the last few weeks is obviously we've uh, been written about a lot. Uh, We've done a lot of things where we've been trying to talk to you, the audience, and uh, there have been articles and headlines taking what we're saying, making it seem like we're on this grand media tour. So um, (laughs) we decided that we just have to shut up. We just can't talk about stuff anymore. I wanted to... So the, the SNL thing, it was wild because I was at first very excited. I of grew, course. I grew mm. up watching SNL. Mm-hmm. I adore SNL. I was actually in a movie. I was seeing Avatar <laughs> when <laughs> SNL happened. And so I ran out of Pandora, took off my 3D glasses and and saw the tweets. And I was like, oh my God. And me, me and Maggie were like, I screamed. I was like, ah! And it was a weird <laughs> feeling because I was like excited and then I felt weird to be excited because the context of why we were on mm-hmm. SNL was not a good context. No. But I was like, you know what? Let me have this fun moment. Right. Let me let yeah. me enjoy this. And I was like, ah! And, and like we hugged and it was cute. And then I opened Twitter and it quickly, the mentions go from... Uh, uh, I, babe, Zach, you're on SNL. Wake up. And to, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry oh, what no. they did to you. And I'm like, what the fuck is that about? So then I go back into the theater 
And let me tell you, there is nothing more excruciating <laughs> than trying to sit in Pandora and watch little ponytail fucking. Yeah. Uh-huh. And while you know that you were just on SNL parodied. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. It was a it was a brutal experience. Yeah, it's tough. I don't feel warmed up enough to talk about this yet. My Are we throat doing good? is full of gunk. I think you're doing great. And it's because I ate the kind bar. <laughs> hey, Zach, this. you're doing awesome, sweetie. <laughs> okay, great. I'm going to keep going then. Yeah, keep going. Um, you're watching Ponytail Fucking? Uh, yeah, you know. You were watching Avatar 1 in theaters? Yeah, it was re-released. Okay, to get cool. you excited for Avatar 2. <laughs> Either you good. <laughs> Can I do a quick... <laughs> <laughs> Can I do a quick non sequitur about this SNL story to tell you about Avatar? Because that's yeah. what the audience wants to hear. Yeah, they want to hear about the Avatar. Avatar. One, it holds the fuck up. Yeah. We were all like putting our noses up and being like, oh, it's a bad story. No, that movie fucking rocks. You hear though, that, TMZ? Even though it's ri- <laughs> written like trash, it is the most perfectly directed uh the most perfectly directed movie with bad lore ever made. But at the end, they're like, hey, we have a sneak peek of Avatar 2. And I'm like, oh my God, get ready to have your world rock. James Cameron has been working on this for 45 years. Yeah. What is this new technology that mm-hmm. they're about to show us? Right. And it's a dialogue scene with characters that we haven't met before. No way. And who, it who, gives, <laughs> who gives a shit? <laughs> who gives a fuck? They keep all the good stuff secret. Give them that shitty scene that we're going to cut. Yeah. There's like like literally all new characters. And I'm like, I don't know the context of this scene. They're arguing about something. They're sitting in a hut. Yeah. There's like, it, it was the most underwhelming tease for anything ever possible. Well, it's like kids who need to see this movie for it to do well were not born when the first one came out. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? But what like, about the jellyfish scene? The little flying jellyfish that things. That was cute. Uh, I yeah. thought that they f- took out the hair fucking. What do you mean they well, took I out mean, the hair? Well, I mean, you can't take out the hair fucking. Who's talking about they took they, out the hair I fucking? I heard a link with a dragon I know, to but fucking I heard, save the world. You they <laughs> took it out? <laughs> I heard they took out hair fucking in the, in the movie. Imagine it's you got integral. soul bonded with your dog. Maybe it was, yeah, that would be. For those who don't remember or who hadn't seen, uh, it's been 10 years. One of the uh, integral plot points of Avatar is that you have a ponytail that has these like sexy tendrils on the end. They're what? They're, um, what are those light cables called? Fiber fiber optic cables. (laughs) You have fiber optic cable hair that links together with someone else's fiber optic cable hair. And they go. (laughs) And it slurps together. And then you (laughs) share a soul for a moment or something. They they literally did. Why Avatar re-release doesn't have the hair sex scene. If you got the Avatar really, didn't they have the sex with their hair? You're okay, you know what? I yeah, they they fuck, and also the hair's fucking too. The hair's fucking too, and they removed it. Okay, final- I thought th- I thought there was more hair fucking. There was still a lot of hair fucking, but I was surprised that they didn't have the hair fucking during the fuck scene. Yeah, yeah. where's the hair fucking? Yeah, where the fuck, fuck is it? What do you, for James Cameron? <laughs> If we're getting into your business, you got to show us that sick ass hair Come fucking. Come on, Jimmy. Uh, I'll tell you that there was enough hair fucking boundaries. for Maggie, who had never seen it before, to be deeply uncomfortable and to audibly in a movie theater. I've never heard her make a peep in a movie theater. She loudly went, huh? Yeah, it's alarming. Well, that's because they didn't show her the real good hair fucking that would have contextualized the That's like kind of hot. It's funny because they established that Harris is kind of like fucking, and then he does link up with various dragons. Yeah. And I'm like, this is cool. I <laughs> He's guess. controlling them with his hair. Yeah. Are you going to wash it off before and you? All creatures have it. So presumably, like, I don't know, they could link with a snail and trees, too. And tree. Oh, yeah. They link with tree. Well, there's a big tree. Yeah. The life tree. The life tree. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> Which. You know, it also has fiber optic cables. What's with all the fiber optic cables? Yeah. Would you link with your buds? Well, I think it, I I can see link. a world where you were at a bachelor party having a few too many drinks, and you're like, "Bro, what have we linked? I know you're about to link forever with your girl, but like, yeah. what if we just linked for a second? So it was like link. Was well, it like, yeah? Is it feel good to link? Or I think is it, it does? Is it just an exchange of information? Because it doesn't feel good when you link with your dragon. Oh yeah. Think about this, Miles. When somebody runs their fingers through your hair, does it feel good? I guess. So now imagine that that was they actually a your, part of fucking. Imagine them running their fingers through your dick. Yeah, I mean. Imagine now you could get inside that feeling and have that feeling yeah. wrap around uh-huh. someone else's feeling. Avatars for perverts. And anyway, continue. Oh, SNL. We were talking yeah, about. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we obviously, we were watching it and it was like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is, oh, oh, this is less cool. Oh, that's what they're going with. Okay. Oh, too bad. But, you know, we had, um, 
we kind of we talked amongst ourselves and decided I guess we maybe shouldn't say anything. And yeah. maybe even this is maybe saying too much because the last thing that I want after weeks and weeks of of yeah. stories is like Hollywood reporter to to take my tweet and then write or like just Jared writes try guys clap back at SNL I just I just can't anymore I mean I did write a tweet and it was just well that was unexpected yeah. and that has no context to what it was right there's nothing in that tweet that says what I'm talking about right and yet it was still swept up by all the people who wrote about it being like even Try Guy Keith commented on it. I'm like, did I? Did I? <laughs> or was did I just eat a burger <laughs> with Avatar hair in it? Yeah, and exactly. now I'm linked together with a burger forever. Yeah. Very unexpected that, that but A, that we were on it, and B, that uh, that we seem to be the butt of the joke. Yeah. What a shitty weekend. It's too bad. Anyway, Zach, so you sort of, uh, because we're not going to really talk about it. Yeah, I did see Avatar, though, yes. You did see Avatar, though. That's awesome. No, you also (laughs) were involved, surprisingly involved in a different Twitter drama. Oh, God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) You can't escape it, man. It's addicting. You, You see those views. You see them rack up. By the way, five million people watched Advice to Go for Miles in the last in the couple, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, and I'm what sure if, they were anyone really confused. Who like came here for like say came here for the drama, stayed for the theme song. I, I don't know about that. I think most I, people. I sent Miles a TikTok. I've seen them all. I've seen every TikTok. He, friends try and send me TikToks about the Try Guys drama, and yeah. my entire feed is me. And I've I'm, seen them. I've seen them. I'm trying to get away from them. I'm trying to retrain my algorithm. I need. I might need to start a new account. Yeah. Um, but there was one account <laughs> of someone or one post where they were watching the podcast for the first time and they got to advice that'll go for miles <laughs> and the look on their face was like, what <laughs> the fuck is this? That's, that's usually the look of whenever we have guests, it's the same look I get. Yeah. People it, are going like, what the fuck is going well, on? Well, they like it though. They do like it. It's fun. It's, everyone yeah. loves a good, like, you know, nineties cartoon theme song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Out of nowhere. Um, but yeah, Zach, you were involved in a different Twitter drama. Yeah, I was um, hoping which, that you had forgotten about it in between. <laughs> I texted you immediately when this happened because it's sort of like you you went toe-to-toe with the gamer. I, I kicked the hornet's nest yeah. of not just a gamer, the biggest streamer on the planet. Yeah. Uh-huh. A Minecraft streamer. Yep. Uh, someone who has a fandom that dwarfs ours. Yep. Who is, they are young. They are active. Mm-hmm. They are passionate. Yeah. And Miles, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I immediately knew it was a bad idea. <laughs> I immediately was like, wow, this, because I've seen the power of gamers. <laughs> and when you kick a gamer nest, it's going to be bad. You mm-hmm. went toe to toe with Dream. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, saying I went toe to toe. You didn't really mean to. I don't even think either of you really meant to. You, um, Miles texted me <laughs> within five minutes. <laughs> You are brave for tempting the dream Minecraft stands. <laughs> because because I know that those people, uh, it's just like a, it's a real fandom. It's real fandom uh, to the nth degree. I don't want to like rehash. So basically, okay. Okay. <laughs> We're Here's, a drama account now. Ay, Jesus. Here's basically what happened. Kanye is, has been obviously <laughs> wild and crazy and very anti-Semitic. Yeah. And there, so there's a lot of news about Kanye's anti-Semitism yeah. all over the place. There mm-hmm. also has just generally been a growing threat of anti-Semitism over the last several years. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's lots of anti-Semitism in other places, but here in America, it's sort of had a resurgence right. uh, through the various uh, horrific alt-right type things. Like they've really glommed onto that, um, which is odd uh, for so many reasons. Um, but uh, Dream <laughs> tweeted what. In his uh, defense, he thought was a obviously sarcastic um, saying like, I, what did he actually say? It, he replied to a Kanye tweet uh, with a joke that I took as not a joke uh, mm-hmm. that to me, I saw it as like, oh, this guy's revealing himself as like an alt-right anti-Semitic douchebag. <laughs> and so right. uh-huh. uh, I, I want to go to the end of the story real quick because to me, the story is not about like mm. the drama and more about why I did this. Yeah. But uh, Dream and I have talked. We have DM'd. DM'd he actually, yeah. he was in LA while I was in New York. He wanted to meet up, which was a very adorable ending to it. He's like, he didn't give a fuck at all. And yeah. he was like, you in LA, you want to meet up? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I can't. You guys <laughs> should have gone and had a pastrami on rye together. Ah, that would have been a Wouldn't beautiful Wouldn't that have been ending. a nice, be funny. Button. 
Now that he's face revealed, he can do some video work. Uh huh. (laughs) Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. When you come across a big obstacle or challenge in life, it is easy to dwell on it and wish you were in a better situation. Uh, I can relate. (laughs) I can relate to that a little too well. But the smarter way to approach it is to immediately jump into a different way of thinking about how you can solve that problem. We're talking about BetterHelp. I love therapy and the ease of BetterHelp to give me someone to talk to whenever I need. Why should you try therapy? Look, maybe you're trying to unload stress. Maybe it's emotional healing. You have anxiety, depression. Maybe you just think that having someone to talk to to help process your thoughts each week would be helpful. I can tell you that some of my most productive sessions have been when I thought that there was nothing really on my mind at all. Doing therapy has helped me feel more confident in myself, more, you know, it's helped me manage my stress. It's just made me an overall happier person. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists at any time. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can help you get there. Visit BetterHelp.com tripod to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com tripod. You love your phone. I know you do. It's your little companion. You're bringing it everywhere with you. It's in your pocket right now. Maybe you're listening to me on your phone. Well, you want a case that's protective and fun to look at. Luckily, thank the heavens, we have Case Defy because they know you need protection for phone cases, but they also know that it should look good. And they figured out how to get you both with tons of great cases to pick from. I'm talking so many designs. I love this case with these weird little melting smiley faces on the back. It's psychedelic, it's fun, it makes me happy to look at. Protection has EcoShock. It's their latest protection technology. It makes their new series of cases for the iPhone 14 20% more protective and just as slim. How do they even do that? Their cases are developed from 65% recycled and plant-based materials, as well as being partially made from upcycled phone cases through their Recase Defy program. Get one of the most protective, cool-looking, and environmentally friendly phone cases the internet has to offer. Get 15% off using our code 15TRYGUYS. That's 15% off at casedefy.com with code 15TRYGUYS or use our link in the description. I don't speak. I don't speak gamer is what I learned. But, yeah. Well, so he tweeted something, <laughs> and I tweeted something very mean, mm-hmm. uh, basically insinuating that uh, the the way that he was bullied, we didn't go far enough as as the internet. Which I want to say, if he were anti, if someone is anti-Semitic, you can bully them. Bully the fuck out of them. Uh-huh. Yeah. You should be relentlessly mean. Um, but it really, the it was a dumb thing. It was a dumb thing I did, especially now. And what I think happened is that after a month and a half, I cracked. (laughs) And I texted this to Keith and Eugene. It's like, there's so much that we can't talk about and can't say. And I can't tell, like, you know, people are like, oh, even fucking SNL is like, oh, his his bro had a little smooch. And I'm like, that's not what fucking, okay, 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 (laughs) fine. I'm just just gonna keep it clamped down. I'm just gonna not say anything. I'm gonna do it right. I'm just gonna do things right. (laughs) And then anti-Semitism's on the rise. And you know what? I'm not gonna weigh in. It's fine. I'm not gonna weigh in. Actually, Maggie's napping. We're in a cap. I'm gonna weigh in. (laughs) Maggie's napping. She can't stop me. (laughs) This was literally, we landed. Uh, we landed in New York. We were on our way to my mom's apartment. Yeah. Maggie was napping. We were five minutes from my mom's apartment. And I go, I shouldn't. I sh-. All right, I'm going to. I do it. And then I get into the apartment. I get your text as I've <laughs> hugged my mom. And I go, ah, oh, shit. This is really doing numbers fast. <laughs> like, yep. it was like 10,000 <laughs> likes in five minutes. I was like, oh, boy. Yeah. And people were like begging me to delete it. And I'm like, oh, boy. And then other people were like, no, Zach, go harder. He deserves it. And like, yeah. I realized suddenly I was swept up in this culture war that I didn't even know was happening. I thought it was with Jews versus Kanye. Nuh-uh. It's, it's Minecraft versus the world. And <laughs> <laughs> They're building their own world there, you know. They're they going are. to inhabit and- it. I was like, oh, fuck. And so I was like, and I'm like, hey, mom, just so you know, um, I need to take a minute to figure out what the fuck I just did. And so I deleted it after like 10 or 10, maybe 12 minutes, but yeah. it did not matter. Yeah. It was screenshotted. You can't, you can't and then, delete anything from the internet. <laughs> we have learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, 
So yeah, that's what happened. And then I was just like very harassed for that night, which I get. It's fine. But then like for the entire night, I was like out to dinner with my mom and I was like, hey, they, I kept checking my phone and I'm like, I just need to know what is happening. And then like my name started trending yeah. and I'm like, oh God, yeah. what have I, it just felt so stupid. Like what have I done? You also like that, it, you really didn't go hard on it at all considering it was something that you thought was like a clear signal that this person was being anti-Semitic. Yeah, I mean, so I I joked about his face reveal and the way yeah. that people bullied him, which people were really fucking mean about. Of that. course, yeah. Um, but uh, people, his fans were then saying I was body shaming. I was like, I'm not fucking body shaming. I'm just saying that y- yeah. if he's anti-Semitic, we should bully him. That's tough. Uh, so I got a lot of that. Um, but then the best was so his tweet was about liberals, and so people then you know that anytime you rail on someone for doing something, they'll search corn ditty liberals, corn ditty whatever. And so they found a tweet where I <laughs> had mocked uh, Tucker Carlson and I was like, this is what the liberals are taking away from us. Oh Let God. our little giggle boy be hot again. And it was a before and after photo of the Pillsbury Doughboy <laughs> with rip- <laughs> a rippling, rippling abs and like <laughs> fucking hot six pack and cum gutters. Mm-hmm. And are we allowed to say that? We said it before. Right. I think you need to explain it's he's referring to what other people call Jesus hips. Yes. <laughs> yeah, where your hips kind of make a little g- gutter. <laughs> Although I wouldn't say that like <laughs> it's not a good term. Like, I, I, oh no, I just like a gutter's purpose, right, <laughs> is for liquid to flow into it for it to flow away. Now their placement of them yeah. doesn't make any sense well, the to be a, a gutter for just, that because yeah. where uh, a gutter isn't behind the shower head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, think of it as a liquid comes out in front of the gutter. Yeah. So why would there be a gutter there? Well, I think it's a gutter for the other person. But yeah, but it's so like, it's so unlikely. I can explain it, but I think for the sake of our audience, I shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. <laughs> I just want to interject with one thing. Yeah. The Try Guys and every member of the Try Guys except me has mm. had their name trending on Twitter in the last... <laughs> months and like my name has just been conveniently left out of yeah. the Twitter. Like you don't want it. I, well, I want it for how Eugene got when everyone's like, Eugene looks sucking pissed. He's going to rip people apart. Yeah. That was a cool way. That was a good his one. name was trending then. Right. Yeah. And you know, you know, I'm here. <laughs> I, 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 here. I, I don't tweet almost anything ever. <laughs> okay. Although I did come up with like, I wanted to tweet I that I wish there was a purge like the movie The Purge, mm. just for Twitter, where anyone can like reveal any secret or any like thing like they've done there and they can't get in trouble. Like anything in their brain that they might get repercussions for, they yeah. can just blurt out on Twitter specifically. <laughs> Keith, I hate to break it to you, that is alt right Twitter. <laughs> I know. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I it's guess it's called Kanye's Twitter account. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. You wanna you want a place to yell? Yeah, we need a place to yell. I get well, that. Why don't you take this opportunity? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Yeah, pretty non-controversial. That's right. I think our theme should be no more drama, and I'm sorry that I caused more. Try guys. Hashtag no, no, no drama. No more drama. No, no more drama, drama in my drama. life. Well, and then people were also clipping the um, the podcast clip from from our podcast where mm-hmm. I was like, "This whole circus is not interesting to me. Whatever, <laughs> blah, blah blah. I don't want any controversy." And then I just kicked that hornet's nest. Yeah, that's right. That, he, I want to talk about that article. That article that was written where you got quotes you talking about your poop. You remember that one? I remember it. Well, they had a bunch of other great quotes from you too. No quotes from me. <laughs> What's that about? I don't know. They decided that I wasn't in the podcast that's or crazy. I didn't say anything yeah. worthwhile. That's crazy. They only had Kornfeld was then went on to say, and then Kornfeld said this, <laughs> said Zach. And yeah. I'm like, I was there. Miles was there. I was there. I was, I was trying to. I, yeah. certain, I must have said something. He said he a bunch of good stuff. He talked about his poop. He did, I, too. Dare, I agreed. <laughs> I agreed, at least. They could have said Habersberger vehemently agreed yeah. about the poop. Uh-huh. It, it include me somewhere. I think you deserved it. That was the Variety article, right? Yeah. yeah. And what sucked about that was that, you know, okay, so this was, you know, we made our podcast. That was for you guys. Hmm. And... One, it sucked that they took what I thought. I mean, they were funny, whatever. But they took these, of all the quotes in an hour-long episode, those were the ones they took. I, God forbid they listen to this episode. I hope they don't. 
They will. Um, they will. Everybody, uh, this is all off the record. You, if you say that to a reporter, they can't use. Oh, it. Oh, okay. This, this podcast all- is off the record. <laughs> <laughs> Suck our dicks. <laughs> off the record. <laughs> Everything I've said thus far. Off, off the, the record. record. Off the record. Um, Go put your fucking hair in somebody else's podcast and that, link it up, bitch. That's right. <laughs> off the record. Off, off the, the record. record. <laughs> I've been trying to use the uh, verified articles about the drama to get verified on Twitter, but oh, it nice. hasn't worked yet. It hasn't worked yet. Because you just need article In order to get verified, you have to like, have a bunch of articles that have your name in them. Okay. I, was like, right. I was like, what if I use that? But it didn't work. Man, I mean, we should figure that out. Damn. Yeah, I kind of like you on Verified, though. You're under the radar. Oh, hey, that blue check mark is, is good in some ways, but in other ways. That's right. You, you know, the blue check mark is the reason, in some ways, that Zach got so much beef about Dream. Like, if you had no blue right. check mark, it wouldn't. Then I'm just it, some guy. Some guy. Then you're some guy. But some you get fuck that guy. Yeah. Some fucking guy over there. <laughs> Right. Not even worth sticking your fucking hair into and fucking them. Before I have a blue t- check mark, then I can just if I say something I like I regret. I'm just like, well, it wasn't me. It's a, stand, a bot, uh-huh. mm. bot account. It was a bot. It's not. Me. I got hacked. I got. <laughs> I got hacked. I got hacked. I got hacked. <laughs> My puppet account. Well, everybody, um, it seems like we've sort of had enough drama. Hashtag I, no more drama. Too much. Yeah, too much drama. Um, the, the, the summary is my bad. Yeah. I cracked because I was stressed and I that's my bad. But at the same time, it's understandable with all the anti-Semitic stuff that oh, you would yeah. think someone was being serious and be upset about it because there's a lot of fucking chaos out there. Yeah. And anytime someone's making fun of a marginalized group in a p- position of power, you mm. should try to defend that marginalized yeah. group. Here's the moral of the story. Bully racists, but make sure they're being racist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good call. You want to make good. sure for sure. That's really good. Now, although we're trying to avoid... The internet drama. <clears throat> yeah. A great place for drama is the stage. That's right. And everybody Keith. saw that I got to be on Broadway. Um, it was very funny because we coincidentally were back in New York on the Saturday that the Broadway video came out. So people were like, were you on Broadway again? I'm like, no. Although I did think about asking if I could come by. <laughs> 100% I, you we, we had such a busy schedule. I really didn't have time yeah. except her on Sunday. I could have on Sunday night, but I was so tired yeah because we had such a go 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 thing Lou Berger was shooting TikToks like with Broadway shows like TikToks. crazy we shot about with like seven different musicals Woo! that's we so visited awesome. our Melissa theater Etheridge. Melissa Etheridge that was that was so cool kind of an unbelievable experience yeah. and she uh was exactly who you want to be the best thing is when you meet a celebrity and they're like nice yeah and cool and then also still as talented as you think they are because she just pulled out her 12 string guitar and was like i'll play this and we'll just she go plays a 12 stringer yeah oh sick. she's dope as hell she's so cool and then we met her her wife and we, her whole crew is really nice and i actually didn't get to see her show but um huey and alex did she's doing an off-broadway one woman show apparently it's incredible does it super mix amazing. music and stories yeah oh wow she tells kind of her life story and then gets wow. to the oh, songs cool. at really the point cool. of her life story has cool projections oh. still feels very much like a rock and roll concert but is a Broadway show. So it's off Broadway through the end of October, I think. And then she's working on getting it on Broadway somewhere, which really just means a a 500 seat theater or bigger. Right. Um, But we toured our off Broadway stage in Theater Row for Wizard of Friendship that Mm -hmm. we're doing in March. And that was kind of cool. It had someone else's um, very normal play set on it, which is like a beautiful set. It's like, wow, that's not what our show will look like at all, but it's a gorgeous (laughs) set. Um, We. Went all around, and then Zach and I did some Food Network stuff. I was hawking hot sauce on the <clears> pier <throat> in New York, so I was, That's so I was fun. busy. I was doing something <laughs> all the time. We did an impro- an, like an accidental impromptu meet and greet. We sure did. Where we uh, we did this event like for this food and wine thing, where we were mm-hmm. hosting cocktail competition. Very unclear to us the entire time what it was going to be. I'd say up until we got there, we we're like, "Oh, this is what this is." Uh-huh. <laughs> we, and uh huh. Even as it was going, we we're like, "Oh, this is what this is," because <laughs> uh-huh. it really was. I mean, I don't think anyone intended for it to be this way, but because they heavily advertised that we were hosting it and had us advertise that we were hosting it, a lot of people bought tickets, and they were only there to see us. Yeah, and they weren't there for the cocktail competition, which was made very clear <laughs> once there was a 150 person line to take photos with us, oh, and boy. no one was actually drinking the drinks that were the comp- competition drinks. <laughs> we're sitting at this ta- at the judges table and we look up and all of a sudden there's just <laughs> like a, a line up. But it was really cool. We got to meet a lot. I mean, it's been a long time since we've uh, met, you know, fans yeah. and got yeah. to do that. Uh, so yeah, that was, was nice. really fun. Yeah, oh, another fun thing about this <clears throat> cocktail event is, so we were told there's a comp- cocktail competition and we were asked to make a drink to not end the competition, but be like, 
parallel to it, right? Yeah. We couldn't win, but they wanted us to make a drink. In my mind, it was like me and Keith were going to be on stage and we were going to like have to make a cocktail yeah. against each other and then feed it to the judges. So yeah. we came up with very dumb, dumb. <laughs> drinks. Bad. What, yeah. what, what was yours? Uh, moon, uh, uh, what is it? Like uh, tequila moonrise. And it was going to be <laughs> tequila with activated charcoal and black. orange juice yeah. and a floating pearl onion to be the moon. <laughs> oh, we kind of wanted to make it like savory and sweet. <laughs> yeah. And then we also, oh my God, they didn't choose that one. They didn't want it. But we did the <laughs> mojito OMFG where it was a spicy mojito with chili oil and Szechuan peppercorn. That's cool. To be like, you know, numbing and spicy. Right. So we're like, cool. I guess we're going to have to make cocktails and like present. No. No. What it was is we get there <laughs> and there's a booth that says the Try Guys uh -huh. and the name of our drink and a professional bartender who's been hired to make to figure this bullshit out. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and serve it. That's awesome. To so people, people were drinking it, and they were like, "I love your cocktail." And then I got it, and I'm like, "This is bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. It just stings my lips. It oh, tastes no. like water and rum. <laughs> it tastes, it tastes like, like water, rum, and it burns." <laughs> And I'm like, this is not good. Anyone oh who says it's good is just trying to like suck it. up to us and oh trying to get God. their hair connected with ours. And I'm like, you can't do it. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, it was, it was ended up being very fun. It was nice to see people. Um, but when the video came out, everyone loved the Broadway video and it was great. But oh, something that's what that, we were talking about. My but bad. something that, no, but something that was even cooler about the experience other than obviously being on stage, getting to do the center bow. The cast is so nice. Everyone really was so nice. But the entire show, I'm backstage with Rachel, and we're just seeing the inner workings of how it works when you change over a set. Where does it go? And the theater's not very big, so everything, as soon as it goes off the side of the stage, it flies into the ceiling. So cool. Everything's just going straight in the ceiling. There's this one great part. You know those um, costumes where there's someone in the middle and they've got like two dummies on each side and they have sticks. Yeah. And the sticks allow them to look uh, like there's five people bit. dancing. Well, they have a, one of those bits. And it's a guy with a bunch of dead. It's a, bunch, it's a dead football team. Right. And watching this guy get, first of all, he gets to get against the wall into the costume and step into it. And he's have three people helping him get in. <laughs> and then they parallel park him onto stage. He has to like, move like he's parking a car. He has to move forward and then angle himself and slowly rotate around with everyone moving him just to do this one bit. That's this incredible. one 40 second long bit <laughs> takes five minutes for him to get into and three minutes for him to get out of. Wow. That's amazing. And I'm like, wow, this is such a fun, like so much more work than is really, I think you get, but yeah. that's just the, what theater is, is like people doing way too much work just for a moment. Like they have people who are getting fully into green zombie makeup and fully out of it for just like a number. Yeah. I'm like, your skin must be fucked up. There's also so many sets to that show. And I got to be the coolest part at the end of Beetlejuice, and this doesn't spoil anything too much. There's like a game show scene. Mm -hmm. And while they're setting up, the, they have to set up the game show scene on the house set. And when they do it, they fly in some other set pieces in the front and there's a scene happening at the front of the stage. So there's a scene happening in front of the stage and then they're setting this up and someone, uh, the stage manager is like, oh, you want to see something cool? I'm like, sure. And we walk and I'm on the set <laughs> during the show. The oh, show is wow. happening. I'm just behind a wall that's obscuring us. They're getting, all the people are dressed up as giant skeletons. There's nine people dressed up as <laughs> giant skeletons walking around and just hanging out before they get set for the thing. I'm talking with Beetlejuice and we're just talking full volume talking like and it's <laughs> so like cool. so like what's next oh this is such a fun bit with this thing it's like honestly we should just like what if we just gave you a mic and you just announced Beetlejuice I'm like oh I don't <laughs> think you should but I would love that but I don't think you can it's like we were just fucking around on the set <laughs> while the show during the wow. show and then it was like oh okay you gotta go that move, wall's gonna move in like 15 seconds like, oh okay <laughs> and, then, oh, shit. I, and that's just so fun is that everyone is completely <laughs> calm and chilling and normal <clears throat> right. and then they walk in front of the audience and bam they are performing and doing these amazing unbelievable things and they come back off stage and like what was I saying oh yeah this taco place that I like it's um on the lower <laughs> east side <laughs> and they're like and because it's their job and it's yeah. kind of like when they're not on stage, they're getting a drink of water from the water cooler and right. you're totally stepping away from the serious thing you were just doing and you're hanging out with your coworkers <laughs> and then you go right back on stage and you sing a song that makes the whole room cry <laughs> and then you come back off stage and you like change your outfit and then you go out and you dance to some goofy <laughs> bullshit song and it's, 
It was just so cool. And oh, I got magic. to go under the stage to see people use like the hydraulic lift. Mm-hmm. Here's a good little Easter egg for <gasps> you is that there's a moment where Beetlejuice pops up on mm-hmm. stage and it looks like a, a spring-loaded launch like you sometimes see in pop shows. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's a normal elevator. And he just crouches himself super low and at a certain part of the, the elevator ride up, he jumps as hard as he can oh my God. to make it seem more dope. That's so cool. He just goes He's that talented. He just yeah. puts in this extra mile. He oh, when you're watching, you're like, he must be on a hydraulic, like super fast lift. I, to, I was in the audience. It looked like a poo. Yeah. He pops up and, and he's just doing it. That's all Brightman, baby. He is wow. I mean, every, the whole cast is super talented, but Alex Brightman, I mean, this show only runs until January, end of January. February. He's amazing. You've got to go see it. And you've got to go see it with him. I'm the touring show was also going to be super fun because it's such a great visual show. It wouldn't matter who did mm-hmm. it. But he's so good at Beetlejuice and so captivating. But you'll in the first number, you're like, "Wow, this is maybe the best performer I've ever seen." Yes, live. <laughs> this is maybe the best performer I've ever witnessed. And because he just he, everything he's doing is just turning on a dime. Yeah, uh, and he's nice. We went. We were backstage with him again this week because we were doing TikToks with some other cast members. He hung out with us for like for ten minutes before the show started. Yeah, just he's chatting. Just cool. He's just a nice guy. It, what I loved to hearing from Rachel, the entire production crew was just so excited to share, and yeah. they'd be like, oh, oh, cool. "Oh, like you know, you talk about going down under uh, under the stage." They were like, "Oh, you want to come see this really cool bit? Hey, come bring the camera over here, <laughs> uh-huh. like because it's just this is like it's show and tell for them. They no yeah. one gets to see this part of the machinations behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. I mean, Rachel was telling me that there was this one bit. So obviously in Beetlejuice, there's the giant snake, mm-hmm. black and white snake. And so there's this one part where she's like on the side of the stage and the snake's basically attacking her camera. Yeah, they the guys just puppet the tail <clears throat> to attack Rachel backstage because they're just waiting for it to actually go on the stage. But they, so the tail on the right is like a windsock. So it's an inflatable tail yeah. where the head on the left is a giant puppet. Mm-hmm. that like is so that it's very they're two totally different materials but they work seamlessly and the and the tail being like air that's like flow a lot goofily but a lot more goofily but they just have it like attack rachel because they're just also having a great time and they're like look check out this cool thing i get to do i, I get to puppet this inflated tail what do you think pretty neat right it's like show and tell and uh yeah it was great and also like everything is perfectly timed Right. We were downstairs before that Beetlejuice launch and we went down before to watch the whole thing. Someone has to take something off of the lift because the lift comes down. So there's a false piece of floor on it. So they take that off. They have a special like fitting dolly that fits right back on. They move something else onto it. Someone else comes from out of nowhere <laughs> just to arrive as that person's locking it in to lock one wheel and leaves. Wow. But that's that person's job to be there to lock one wheel because it would take four seconds for the other guy to get to the other side and lock the wheel, and there's no time for that. So another person comes down specifically to lock a wheel, leaves, and then Beetlejuice comes down. He's getting his new wig and makeup touched up right next to it. Then he walks up, and the moment he gets on it, it starts lifting up. Like, it's so... It's, so cool. it's like the whole thing is a bunch of gears, and they're all just perfectly interlocked, and the show is flowing on a perfect little time clock. I know that even my little entrance because it got like a little bit of a pop because our friends were there and other people were there who knew who I was. And when I walked on for my 20 second bit, it made it like a 24 second bit. <laughs> and that was like, oh, we had to like wait. Uh, we had, they had like, it was, it affected the timing of oh, something wow. else. Yeah. Just huh. so minor because that's not a bit that gets any applause because right. it's right. movers. And it's just, it's literally moving set pieces. That's yeah. all it actually is. Yeah, right. But because I came out as an extra character and people like clapped, it made Beetlejuice wait like two seconds for a line wow. and it changed the energy of the show. It and just the, even, has this ripple effect. E- even for yeah. them, they liked it because it gave them something new. Right. To, it changed their performance. Yeah. And how rare do you get to change your performance mm-hmm. when you're doing something every night every day wow for and a year it, for that, years so cool that like so i saw the show with you three months ago mm-hmm. and now you were you just were in the show yeah that's a crazy turnaround to <laughs> see something and be like this is an incredible musical one of the best musicals i've ever seen and then to be in it so yeah and later. it was because i so i always like when i see cool shows or something i take an Instagram and I tag them on this 
tiny little chance to be like, oh, that blue check mark boy <laughs> yeah. came to our show. I wonder if he'd like to come backstage. Because once we went to see SpongeBob and we did that and they said, hey, would you like to come for a backstage tour after the show? And we're like, uh-huh. uh-huh. And we went and then we got on. We they let us SpongeBob. on stage. We took photos with Gary. Gary. We were also high. <laughs> High as little kites because we were going to see SpongeBob. I don't think I've course. ever been more stoned in a public. We setting. were super stoned and we're getting a tour of backstage and then we're on stage and letting us take pictures and we're taking a picture with the snail and we're like, well, I'm very, very high shit. for this opportunity. And uh, <laughs> so I, I, I tagged them and they didn't really respond. And then the next day they did. They said, oh, thanks so much for coming. We hope you enjoyed the show. And I said, I love the show. It was so fun. Everyone was so great. And they were like, cool. And then I, th- I don't know who said something, but I just basically said, you know, we've always wanted to do um, a Try Guys Try Broadway video uh, if you'd ever be interested. And they were like, oh, yeah, that would be great. It's so cool. And then it set the wheels in motion. And three months later, we were right. shooting a video with them. And it, it's it, they were great videos mm-hmm. we just had gotten, as pieces. We had gotten close before, but I'm, I'm glad this is the time that it finally happened. It was the yeah. perfect show, the perfect cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I had told you both that after the show, you know, I was a little jealous of Keith. I was super jealous of Rachel. (laughs) Oh yeah. Uh, Because just like to be able to have your camera Uh down there to film, film all this stuff. It just was like, it's so beautiful and cinematic. I mean, it's theatrical. It's, it's Broadway, but uh, yeah. it, you guys got such cool footage, and it's such it was it's so really cool fun stuff. There. Yeah, it was really cool. I had my own dressing room. <gasps> <laughs> like they gave me the music director's dressing room for that night's performance because they they just really went all out to make it as cool of an experience as possible. They announced me on the intercom. They announced mm-hmm. halfway through the show on the intercom that I would be doing a bow at the end as well, which they hadn't told me before. Like oh, they told wow. me that that center bow was happening at intermission, but I still didn't really know if it was going to happen. So like the look of joy and surprise on my face is very real because I was like, well, they said I would set her bow, but like, how will that work? Right. Like, I, I, I'm not going to walk over there myself. <laughs> <laughs> and no, they just, uh, he came up, Alex came over and grabbed me. We came over, took a bow. So cool. Keith was the obvious right choice for so many reasons. I mean, <laughs> he he loves this. He it means so much to him. It it meant. I mean, it would have meant a lot to anybody, but it, I think for it sure. meant more to him. But then also, Alex and Huey, his band, were there. Becky was there, mm-hmm. and like yeah. I definitely and and we were there, and we were sitting in the crowd, and I had this moment of like, oh man, this would have really sucked if they were here to see Quasi on stage. <laughs> <laughs> It was yeah, like, no, it's when, like when we first found out about the opportunity, I told Alex, we we're like, oh, we're going to shoot with Beetlejuice. She's like, when are you doing it? It's like, well, we're all going to audition and one of us will make it. It's like, I'm buying tickets. I was like, but what if I don't make it? It's like, there's no way you won't make it. Yeah. I was like, and I'm not going to miss my friend's Broadway debut <laughs> yeah. for anything. It was I'm adorable. Going. It was it's very so sweet. Uh, Becky was, I was also didn't know. I was like, hey, we're going to go. It's like, well, I have to come. It's like, why? It's like, well, because you're going to be on Broadway. I'm like, well, maybe. He's like, no, you will. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> and they all came and it was it was great. And also, like, I had a friend, Rob Coletti, who mm-hmm. is in Almost Famous. Mm-hmm. And he just happened to be there that night to see Beetlejuice. <laughs> just totally, uh, like, he was just there. And he, like, sends me a text right before the show because there's the little uh, Playbill insert. And he says, yeah. uh, is there something you need to tell me? <laughs> Do you live here now? Because we went to college together, and he is like actually a Broadway actor. He's yeah. been in touring. He was on school in School, he was of, in school Rock, of Rock. Right? He was mm-hmm. in something else, and now he's in Almost Famous on Broadway. And like, it was just so funny that he was and Eric Tabak. Eric Tabak, know, oh, yeah, who's our buddy. He's been in some of our videos. Old buddy from Buzzies. He was also just randomly there that night, <laughs> and he what? facetimes me in the crowd when I'm backstage, and he's like, "What the fuck?" So like, we had. So many people from our lives there. It was, it was so weird. serendipitous. Yeah. And like Try Guys fans were there. People were wearing, someone was wearing a Savor the Summer shirt. Yeah. And like came Just up to say hi to and was there. like, what the fuck is going on? That's yeah. so funny. And I'm like, I've never seen that shirt in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only seen it a few times. And I, I didn't like tweet out or anything. Right. Hey, a special surprise in tonight's Beetlejuice show. Right. Buy your tickets. By and- the way, shout out to that fan. When I, I complimented her Savor the Summer shirt, she's like, you know, summer's almost over. Got to savor it. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> really made me laugh. Yeah, it was a great, I mean, it was an amazing experience. And then I will say the, a really great moment of that story is that night after we went and like celebrated at a bar, 
we all rode bicycles through uh, 2 a.m. New York. Oh. Uh, back to our hotel. It was a straight line. I mean, this was also the day, <clears throat> the night that our Food Network show premiered. Right. So it was yeah. literally, we finished Broadway and then ran to a bar mm. to watch uh, our yeah, we, TV show We premiere. asked them to put our show on TV. And then so. And we all cheered in the bar. Mm. And then uh, two everything days changed. later, everything <laughs> changed. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> everything uh, everything changed. And like, that's when I was talking. I think I talked about this somewhere else that like that weekend was when I was thinking, wow, th- I don't think my life could be any better than this. <laughs> Things are going so well. I'm so <laughs> happy and grateful and yeah. proud of like the work we're doing, having a TV show, like being able to achieve a theatrical dream of mine, and mm. it just felt, and also like all my friends who came out to be supportive of that. It made me feel very lucky. <laughs> and then it was, <laughs> I don't think I was super lucky after yeah, that. <laughs> right? And, you know, he had to. The universe had to balance itself yeah. out. Yeah, true. Did did uh, being on the show like that make you uh, want to do a Broadway? I mean, you're doing an opera show, but like a run like that, uh, it seems so exhausting. It's it seems like just something that I don't think I could do right now. Yeah, with the other dreams and ambitions I have, and how much time you really have to commit to Broadway to do Broadway. But I really could see myself like a little later in my career doing a Broadway stint for like a six month run. Right. Like being a, I think that would be really cool uh, and a great artistic experience. I mean, I'm going to get a taste of it with Lou Berger with our show for a month and even a month. It's going to be a lot. I mean, we're going to do five shows, uh, no, seven shows a week, seven shows uh, and always in five days. We'll have Monday and Tuesday as our dark uh, days, but like, that's going to be a lot. It's going to be tough. I mean, I've got to, I was, we were talking about, it's like, man, we're going to have to, I've got to start exercising. If I don't start exercising regularly by the beginning of November to prepare for a March run. Yeah. And I've got to, I've got to be like Miley Cyrus. I got to be running on a treadmill singing. Oh my gosh. Uh, is that her workout? Yeah. Have you never seen her do that? <laughs> no. One of the ways she preps You said for, that as if we all knew oh, that. Oh, well, it was That's a very genius. viral yeah. like um, video that she, to prepare for tour, <clears throat> she runs and sings on wow. a treadmill. Yeah, that makes sense. And she's belting. She's running like, and like sprint, like I feel like a pretty good <laughs> job. sprinting. Like a pretty <laughs> darn like. Yeah. Yeah. The, but she sounds song. normal. Yeah, right. She doesn't Perfect. sound like she's exhausted. That's so hard. Yeah. Like, I came in like a wrecking ball. I know. And she's just running. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's so, awesome. And like, that is what you have to do to be like that kind of performer. Right. We're definitely going to find ways to like, how do, how will we actually do five shows or seven shows in a row without keeling over? And right. just to, like, and I've got to get a better stretch routine started. I've just got to make a lot the of vocal warm ups and warm vocal downs. And I've got to do a whole <laughs> change in my lifestyle to be able to totally. do that even just for a month. Yeah. It's going to be like being an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> like a basketball player. <laughs> like yeah, like damn. basketball players play like 100 games a week, it feels like. I was thinking about Broadway because I, I love Broadway. I got to grow up with it just being in proximity to New York. But so many people have never had the chance to see it. Mm-hmm. And obviously for a lot of reasons, it's expensive. If you're not in New York, oh, maybe you see your local expensive. theater and you go, ah, I'm not really into that. Broadway is a different thing. Yeah. Entirely, but Broadway's having a tough time right now, especially post pandemic. And then just as time goes on, the only shows I mean, so many shows are IP driven, like mm-hmm. Beetlejuice, because mm-hmm. you kind of have to be yep. in order to get eyeballs. A Strange Loop, which won the Tony, is phenomenal, is already closing down. Yeah. After its first year. Um, Such a good show, too. Because there's a, there's an economic prospect to to making art and you can't afford to stay. Unless you're basically, I mean, Beetlejuice is closing down, too. They told us. Unless you're selling out every single night, you can't stay open. And that's just... Oh, it, it, and like, I think it's, we should expect to break even. Yeah. But yeah. like... But that, by the way, I mean, we're, where we're at in our lives, we're kind of cool with breaking even. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's, cool it's a lot of work. And that's, I can only imagine, you know, the cost of a 1500 seat theater with the amount of money it takes to make Beetlejuice happen. Like mm. you've got to be selling out every single show on average. <laughs> right. And 
and also <laughs> not just selling it out with people buying their tickets, t- t- KTS tickets, like right before the show, spending $25 <laughs> on the worst seat left. You need to be selling every ticket at its listed price. Right. And you just can't. You just can't. And so like it's the economics of Broadway make n- no sense as to why people <laughs> do it, except for the people love it. And it is an amazing experience. And that's why you got to go see theater on Broadway because it's the best of the best. It can't be better than that. Even a bad show on Broadway is pretty impressive. I don't expect yeah. that I'll ever run for mayor of New York. Doesn't seem like a job for me, but Mm-mm. I think we should subsidize Broadway. I think I think they do get some grants. Well, but, let's but give them more. They're probably federal grants. <laughs> yeah, not, not I just state like grants. it's so essential to the identity yeah. of of New York City. Yeah. The idea that you ever have a future um, where it's not economically feasible to keep theaters open, like that's just so devastating to my mind. And the arts are so important. The arts are so important to the I, the culture and identity of that city, but to the world. And and I also think that subsidizing it theoretically would allow for uh, more equity in terms of accessibility. Yeah, I, I you know we were with Quasi. Yeah. Quasi grew up in Brooklyn. I mean, what thirty minutes mm-hmm. from Broadway? Yeah, and he's like, I never went to see a Broadway show growing up. And he's like, not a chance. I I couldn't afford that. And mm-hmm. it's it's a very inherently classist art form because it's just it has to be yeah uh the, the ticket prices are are too expensive so yeah it, it's a real shame um i i, I don't know and I it's just like, to say about it no, i just no, no. it sucks and I with totally inflation it's like even worse right everything costs more for the production everything costs more for the consumer at, in their normal life so they don't have as much expendable income so it's really arts suffer always when there's like a like a depression or a recession and it's it's arts specifically that we need to at least lift up our spirits mm-hmm. to ignore the the sad reality around us. So it's a very, uh, it's a rough little paradigm that people get put in. The you, paradigm, par- the paradox paradigm. Paradox paradigm. That's a downer, <sighs> but it sure is fun to do theater. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and it, you know, it's the, yeah, the Broadway thing is super great. The off-Broadway project for Lou Berger will be very artistically fulfilling. We've been doing lots of touring. We're on tour again in November, but everything after that is going to be like, <laughs> Nose, nose in the dirt. Is that what, is that a phrase? Nose, nose to, the to the grindstone. That's what it is. Sounds Fucking painful. Working. Does sound painful. <laughs> Does sound painful. I don't want to put my nose to a grindstone. Well, if you're trying to figure out how to get successful without putting your nose to the grindstone, you're going to need some advice, some very specifically amazing good advice, something that Miles has thought about for months and saved specifically for today's podcast. And that is the advice segment coming up right now. Advice that'll go for Miles with Miles Monsignore. My favorite style. Yup. Yeah. Yo, Baby's yo, room, baby yo, yo. toddler room, music. He has been a couple ghosts around. They call me the spooky guy. I'm here to say, hey, don't cry. When I scare you, you're gonna be scared. Okay, hey, everybody. Where's the bear? The bear is a Hulu original. It was really good about the restaurant industry. And I'm gonna be somebody who spooks you so hard that you pee. Okay, Halloween is the motherfucking time. I am on my motherfucking grind. So hard, I make a million dollars, and everybody looks at me and they moan and holler. It's a advice down to the ad tice. Uh huh, make a rice down an ad slice. I'm a little bit of pico de gallo. Mm-hmm. Pico it on my guy, though. You make rice in your ass slice? Was something you said there? Hey, everybody, what's up, Miles Nation? How's everybody doing tonight? Add slice rice. <laughs> I hope you're having a jimmin and jammin time Woo! because yep, I jimmin. certainly ham. Ham breakfast. May I introduce you to something that I've been doing lately? I would love that. Flossing. The dance. Easy, Keith. Easy. Okay. I want you to say easy. Easy. Have you ever wanted to drive so hard that you're a a soldier of the road? Drive so hard, I'm a soldier soldier of of the road. road. Do you want your teeth to have beef? 
outside of them. Are you flossing? And not in between them. Are you flossing? Flossing is so yesteryear. Water picking. But water picking is so two years ago. Oh. Oh. I'm asking you to drive to the bar and floss in your car. Floss on the go? Can you believe I actually got it? That is crazy. I didn't even say quick. anything. I can't believe this is a <laughs> fucking, I feel like a star. <laughs> Shout out to my friend who gave me this piece of advice. He told me that he has been flossing in his car. Because you're in the car. You got nothing else you to do. Yeah, nothing else to do. You got an oral fixation. You got a little tin of floss picks. And as you're going, just uh-huh. floss, floss, floss. And that's how you get the sauce. I now, used to know- be a car flosser. What happened? Well, when you floss, yeah. that stinky little grime mm-hmm. you're pulling out of your teeth, yeah. it gets on your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're fingers and your hands yeah. have stinky little grime on them. I don't think them. you're making your floss long enough. I'm talking about with picks. With floss picks. Because he's talking oh, about floss picks. Floss picks are stupid. Uh, Zach you're is anti- stupid. Zach's anti-floss oh. pick. Here's the thing. Anything that gets you to floss is a good product. Yeah, I agree. And Zach's, what, what are you over here with fucking rope? Okay. What are you over here? No, 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 no. He's, what are you he's, he's fucking got, Boy Scout? Like, he's got expensive floss. He's about I, to sell you I'm a $9 I'm coming in with the real right advice. Now. Are you fucking ready? Use floss picks. Don't listen to Boy Zach. Scout over here freaking tying a knot every time. Okay, first of all, you know, proper floss technique. You go both sides in your gums. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. Obviously, we fucking, and the pick makes it so easy. Doesn't make yeah, it The pick sure. makes it so it easy, sure. dude. And I'm blessing on both sides of my I'm head. not kidding. I've been in two situations with dental hygienists recently. Yeah. I was, one of them was at a wedding and like, I was able to pull this bit of knowledge out and they were so impressed with me. And so they're talking about <laughs> flossing and I'm like, you on that cocoa floss game? And they go, how do you know about cocoa floss? And I go, oh boy, I know about cocoa floss. Cocoa floss is this coconut-based ro- rope. Uh, and okay, you know like that like little shitty flimsy ribbon? Yeah. That Colgate shit? Yeah, no uh-huh. one likes the plastic ribbon. Nah, uh, 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 uh. Uh-huh. Cocoa floss. Yeah. Costs, <laughs> it's wildly expensive. Yeah. Uh, but it has the grip, the thickness. Yeah. Miles, let me bring some of this floss in for you're you. A snake, Soft, you're a snake oil thick. salesman. You no, you don't. You you're, have no. I, you're I swe- hanging out in the vitamin aisle <laughs> and selling supplements. I, I swear care. to you, I swear on my life. When you try this floss, yeah. you're gonna go, oh my god! I have been living in the cave, looking at shadows on the wall, and now I <laughs> wow. am finally <laughs> alive. Reference. Allegory of the cave, motherfucker. <laughs> it is. It will change your life. And so here's what happened. A dental hygienist told me about it. I was like, oh, yeah. I bought some. Me and Becky talked about it. Becky got a package of like 40 flavors. And she goes, (laughs) they're all nauseating to me. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I only like the original flavor. I don't want pomegranate flavored floss. Oh, God. I, I go... I can't really taste or smell the difference. Give them to me. Yeah. I have been living off of this gifted pack of floss yeah. from Becky for about two and a half, maybe since the, before the pandemic. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been like three years. Yeah. And I floss every night. I love this shit. I'm look, okay. I, All right. I, this is the Zach Kornfeld guarantee. It's good floss, but it's the best floss. Yeah. It's still gonna leave stinky little tooth grime on your fingers because it doesn't matter how long your yeah. thing is if you're winding it and moving it your fingers are eventually moving to the what place hand that your floss was hand sanding in the car sure if you have hand sanding in the car that fixes it but yeah. i at the time back we gotta when I was we gotta talk flossing. about this stinky little grime I, I, have you guys never talked about <laughs> i i feel like no one talks about the stinky little grime <laughs> I right? think that you got some shit going on. No, no, you have no. stinky grime too. Zach. No, that's the number one cause of bad breath is not flossing. Yeah, because you get food particles in your yeah. in your gums and your teeth, and they're not going away. So they it's little particles of food that are rotting in yeah. your mouth. Right. So, gross. so like when you floss, it makes hey, it's stinky make little your, grime. It makes your breath smell better because you're removing the stinky little grime. Yeah, and you get stinky little grime on your fingers. Look, if you have if you don't believe this, next time you floss. No, you're those stinky little fingers. Yeah, it's too gross. I, it's true. It's too gross. gross. It's hey, bleep it. Cleaning you, uh, yourself <laughs> involves acknowledging that you were dirty. Yeah, and you had stinky little grime. And I'm I th- then that's why I'm flip flossing in the car. It works. Flip flossing. No, he leaves your your fingers are all stinky. Because the then car. you get stinky grime, and then you you just like wash your hands when you arrive. Yes, when you arrive. But for I, the record, or sanity. what if what if you are you get out of your car, and there is George Clooney. 
And he says, hey, Keith, yeah. I've been a big fan. I'd love to meet you. And he extends his hand. You, you, better, you, you know do you what think the, that George Clooney's going to sniff his hand immediately after shaking? I just don't want him to. What if he shakes my hand and says, let's share these French fries? Yeah. He shakes your hand and then he, he grabs a French fry. And as yeah. it comes toward his mouth, he's like... Oh, yeah. Did you just floss? You're griming. He's yeah. not going to know. <laughs> You're griming for You're, sure. Yeah, stinky little tooth For grime. the record on the record, the dental hygienist at the wedding who was very drunk said two things to me. One, he had a water pick. He was he was fully on that water pick game, which yeah. to me, I was like, I don't know, man. Seems seems a little... He, that seems I've heard that if you, in, you know, the original advice was you need both. And I think now the advice is whatever you got that's going to make you do it. The perfect way to do it is probably the hard, but you're going to go question water. a dental hygienist. Yeah, I am. He, yeah, I'm going to question. I'm going to interrogate. He's I'm going to tie him up. I'm gonna tie, he's not he's a dental hygienist. He's not even he's a, a hygienist student. Yet. If you want a free cleaning, go to him before the end of the month. Oh, shit. Really? He's in Long Beach. Okay, cool. I have his number. That's I need a deep to go clean. for free teeth. I agreed. Uh, uh, and then number two, yeah. uh, he told me that teeth whitening uh, was a sham. Yeah, it's not a sham. It does he, whiten your teeth. No, but he's like, don't like to go to a guy to like go oh, in. Oh yeah, they're doing the same thing that the the little things like the strips are doing. No, no, he was like, it's bad for you. It's really bad for you. Do like, you not know it. this? But you look so hot. It weakens your teeth. But and then it he also gave me a, a toothpaste. Oh, to whiten my teeth. Well, so whitening toothpaste, I dealt with this because I um got I got a bunch of cavities all at once. I'd never had them, and I had like nine in a year. <gasps> and um, whitening toothpaste I've been using for years, but it really makes your teeth sensitive. Yeah. So if you're like hot and cold are bothering you, or like you bite down, and you're like, oh, my teeth are just so sensitive. Like I went back to the dentist, and it was fucking excruciating because I had been weakening mm. and the nerves and stuff in my teeth by using so much whitening toothpaste. So you're really not supposed to use it like every time. Like they, if you use whitening toothpaste, use it like every other or like you a couple times use a week. Sensodyne, yeah, pretty it much has whitening in it because it's it's counter. It's better. Yeah, you wanted me to use this Arm and Hammer one. We're not gonna do any <laughs> free advertising for Sensodyne. Army Hammer was canceled, like Zach. Um, anyway, <laughs> also don't brush too hard or else you're going to have your gums recede. That's not true. Yes, it is. That's not true. It happened to me. Yeah, but you're, but sp- you're, but like also your gums will recede if there's bacteria in the gum lining. I said, don't brush too hard. <laughs> yeah, but I you didn't want to brush <laughs> too soft. I want I my said, teeth. Don't brush too hard. I actually brush. want my gum liner recede. So I have the longest teeth in the biz. No, you, you don't. don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you're going to you're going <laughs> to look don't. me in the eyes and question me. <laughs> you don't. Yeah, I do. There's oh, a pressure wrong. that is just right. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? I have Philip Sonic hair and I just, you're supposed to let it glide. You're not supposed to apply pressure at all. I push my teeth. Right into that brush hard. Yeah. So you're saying don't. So you looked at me and you said it was a lie and now yeah. you're backing it up. I'm backing it up. Long tooth binge. <laughs> oh, Do you got a new sound. Effects? Fuck yeah. Why did you hold that for the end? <laughs> the sound effects. I have a bunch of sound effects I'm going to probably use Boom. next week. Oh, okay. That's that's worth God. coming back to. You guys are like, I after this <laughs> podcast, I might be giving it up. And now you know that hit next week. Hit it again. Hit it again. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, fuck! Everyone loves a good pedal tone. That's baby. right. A That's good right. impact sound effect I, with a pedal tone. Fuck yes. I'm so hyped right now. Why did we not start the episode with that? You have to listen I to know. my bullshit drama. Well, I know. Get into, with the, little yeah. get into the next episode. That, I mean, um, so next week we can come back here. <laughs> Sorry, Keith. Um, Easy. <laughs> oh, you know what? We got to end the episode. We got to okay. end this episode. Keith, here's with the official tripod theme song. Dear Evan Hansen, did you mean to break your arm? Have enough people <laughs> signed your arm? It is the tripod. <laughs> Have a good ass week. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>